way, and I'm, I'm talking culturally. You know, so if you're into this label that you've been given for whatever reason, maybe you're just a follower. Oh, okay, I'm African, whatever. Or maybe you you, you kind of had like, no, I'm an American and I have the rights of an American. And then you kind of fall into a rabbit hole and you start studying Africa and it changes you like that. Either way, that's where you're at. So you have that path. And that's that's what I'm trying to say. Like you you have that path, you take it and then you you look at it and it's super African culturally. So that's what I'm going to display in this video, how ancient Egypt is super African culturally. And it's African in a way, and this is what I was telling this brother, and I, I don't want to go in on this brother. But I, actually, I'm going to have to fire him up. I'm going to have to fire him up. I, I, I'm going to have to fire that dude up. But I told him, I'm like, you cannot look at Afri um, ancient Egyptian culture and just say it's cultural. I, they say it's diffusion. I don't know if that's the right word for it. It's, and I said, hey, People might be able to discover bread. They might discover cinnamon. But if they're making cinnamon rolls, they're getting it from somebody else. Like somebody invented the cinnamon roll and it spread around. Because that's usually how it works. I mean, if you go to the Vietnamese market and you get one of them, them sandwiches, I call them colonialism sandwiches because it's made with French bread. They didn't have bread like that until the French. So the other exchange on Twitter and this is quick and this one's kind of funny and this also shows how evil racism is you got this brother Sean King uh, who I don't know that much about Sean King I'm kind of whatever on his politics but one thing I noticed uh, a while ago is he really goes into great detail when it comes to uh, police brutality as far as giving you what the news is ignoring, analyzing things, and doing that in the pursuit of justice. Here you have a, a Trump pansy, a bigot, and what's funny is it's a person on Twitter with a American flag avatar. They want to talk about how Sean King is cultural appropriating. And this just so shows you how evil works. Let's still some stuff that we're already doing and beat the other person with it. It's, it's sick evil. And I'm like, you got an American flag avatar. And here's the thing. I don't care what, you know, he's very light skinned. I'm not sitting here going to break down his ethnicity because the way I see it is anybody, everybody has some albinism in them. That's why we got white palms and souls. You know, we also got that dog hair that we say white people have. We got that on our eyebrows. So, um, there is no pure race. We, we're all a cut from, from, from each other. You know what I mean? So race is the ability to enforce an opinion. That's all race is, you know, and sometimes we have to be pragmatic about, Hey, you know, and work together within that, that, that environment, but that's, it's, it's not objective. So I said, no, that it, that's that's a, a albino dude who identifies with this construction of black. This is a tweet, you know, something like that. But the main thing is I put up these pictures. <laughs> Let's get it started. And I said this right here. You know, that's cultural appropriation. <laughs> this is cultural appropriation. This is cultural appropriation. And I'm like, man, I got to put $50 on that because dude had an American flag avatar. So, no, any, somebody with an American flag avatar can't tell me a goddamn thing. No, no, check that. Somebody in a country with a, with a red, white, and blue flag, they can't tell me nothing about cultural appropriation. So, let's get it started. Um, this will be a fun, quick, and this is kind of a looker shit video, but... Because it's so obvious, all you really need is pictures. They have a lot of artwork and they put the pictures up. So I was just going to bump through it and have, and kind of, you know, I might go into a little detail with it. First, we got the voodoo doll. And here's the thing. This voodoo doll, I think it was kind of like a reverse voodoo doll. In, uh, but anyhow, got some pyramids. These look like Ethiopian pyramids. We got Yoruba pyramids. Those aren't up anymore. 
uh, I'm putting this in twice. This, from what I understand, is not a snake, but I could be wrong. I see this comparison, so that might just be uh, coincidental. Because, you know, look, like you don't really see stuff like this. Let me go back. This is good. That's a hell of a piece of art. There you see images of, I think that's ancient Mali or ain't, no, I think that's in ancient Sudan. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's the Sudan. That's, that's modern Sudan. It got too hot in those areas. And this is just a, a modern African artist. I'm not sure he is located. Hyper realism. Queen Latifah. Why, why did I put that there? I'm, just, I'm having fun today. I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm going to pause it. Well, let me pause it here and just say that the tenets of traditional African culture, this is somewhat accurate. I think number one is a little sketchy because it doesn't mention all the other gods because it's kind of a duality between the one and the representations. So then you can you can read, I'm sure. But anyhow, it's the tenets are the re one remote supreme being. I would also add many gods that go along with that, but some like East Africa, it's more even in ancient times was more kind of Abrahamic, where you would have angel-like creatures, or North Africa, where like if you like even in Islam, Islam has genies and freaks. Matter of fact. I'm not going to recommend watching uh, Gods. I think it's Gods of America. Because there's a nasty-ass gay sex scene that just jumps at you. Where this this freak booty some dude. So, I would advise watching that. But for the gay brothers, you might want to pick that up. Uh, ancestor veneration. Yeah, we'll get, we'll get to it. I'm just going to show examples. Yeah, let's get to some examples. So, this is Wikipedia. And like I said, when I did the video on Wikipedia, I have issues with Wikipedia. But top to bottom, it's a great source. You just have to make sure to, to fact check it. And it lists ancient Egypt as one of the traditional African religions. Monotheism and polytheism. This is from the Book of the Dead. It's a whole chapter on how it taught you have a plural understanding and a um, mono understanding. I, don't know, I should keep it in the same language and say poly and mono. Mono. So you see this in the Book of the Dead. The understanding of the Book of the Dead. They frequently refer, refer to God in the singular and the plural. Here's uh, an example from Asario Motep where he shows different African languages. Uh, and their word for God, how a lot of these words are the same and they're born from the same concept, water, guardian, spirits, libation, pouring, uh, cleansing, yada, yada, okay. So, this is uh, gods from the Sudan, somewhat of a pantheon. This is, oh, this this is like, this is the last one. I'm kind of out of order right here, but it shows how in the Khan, the the king and queen are like a genetic rope to the ancestors. They're, they represent the soul of the nation. I think this is a... I'm not sure if this is Wirafo or Sorry on Motep's work, but let me keep that pushing. I'm, I'm out of order, showing the gods again. These are uh, gods of Ethiopia. Uh, this is a Khan Pantheon. This is a Yoruba Pantheon. And they they have the, the most stylish Pantheon um, next to ancient Egypt that I know of in Africa. It's, it's hard to say who, who beats them because you can always see images like, like this of the Yoruba Pantheon. So when it comes to spirits, I'm just going to give one example. Happy. Because you can get the Book of the Dead, Pert and Maru, and just do a, a word finding for the word spirit. And man, it's just everything spirit. You know, this this represents the Nile River. This is not a river you're looking at. This is a spiritual representation. Uh, spirits are abundant in ancient Egypt, and this is why I'm making the point. It's super African. Uh, we can go to Ancestor Veneration. I'm going to skip Ancestor Veneration because I think most people don't really need an explanation of, of when it comes to how ancient Egypt 
venerated its ancestors. All you got to look at, it, at uh, King Tut's golden mask. Uh, so next we have the belief in magic, charms, and fetishes. Here you have a list of all the many magics. This is Benin. Uh, this is a fetish in ancient Egypt. There's an example of the fetish right there. Uh, it's used with animal parts um, to, uh, I think it helps commune with uh, nature in different ways. There's actually, I, I, this, this is something that may be a little bit unique to Egypt. I don't, I'm not sure who else mummifies baboons, uh, you know, like like I showed in a minute ago in Benin, it, they fetishize animals, kind of like in that, that, I think it's an Ampu fetish. So the next, we have the mediator between the god and tribe. I showed you how that exists for the Khan, and this is how it exists for ancient Egypt. Uh, it's this basic understanding of ancient Egypt that the Pharaoh was, uh, represented a, a uh, temple or, a mediation between the gods and people so yeah represented the gods of, on earth um, go quickly into phenotype because you know we got the afro pics we got the sisters that, that might have to monitor their blood pressure even back then we got uh, the bean head the bean head with King Tut the bean head uh, I've seen this a bunch of times. Just throwing some pictures. Okay, now I'm about to get a little get big grittier. As you can see, this right here, he's wearing the white crown of Upper Egypt, and he has a bull's tail. That's a tail that he's wearing. But that's also something that you see with Zulu warriors. You see it in their text. It represents strength. You put that on. It in itself is a magical fetish to give you strength on the battlefield. I... Another thing you'll see, and this is why I was told it to do, it's cinnamon roll. Because uh, you see the same symbol on Zulu shields. Bull tail, shield symbol. You also have hunting sticks. Hunting sticks are all over the world, though. Matter of fact, this is one area where Egypt is a, maybe closer to uh, Europe. And I've talked before about how there's a uh, Neolithic connection with ancient Egypt in Europe. But you have hunting sticks all over the place. Uh, then you have the Zosa collars. Uh, you have um, watership houses and punts. So this is like them. This is a depiction from Egypt when they went into um, Greater Africa. Most likely, I, I think uh, punt was the Great Lakes region and Blue and White Nile. So like Ethiopia, Tanzania, that type, that area. And as you can see. People still have houses like that. You got the horns in the Ch Chaluba Bantu, the Luo, uh, ancient Kushites, ancient Egyptians. You got the same um, type of hairstyles. You got the cattle culture. You got the um, leopard skins worn the same way with the face. Uh, you got the, the feathers, feathers. This, this little girl, I'm going to go back to her. She has feathers. She also has hieroglyphs on her face, but those aren't Egyptian hieroglyphs. Then you got the, the head stools. These things are not intuitive. They don't look intuitively comfortable. I don't know who would invent that. I would sooner invent a pillow. Like a pillow is something that people can invent separately, but somebody is going to wear that, that uncomfortable thing, that, you know, and design it the same way. And he, But home, he looks comfortable. So uh, this... It's just an African cap. You see, it's been worn that long. An African head wrap. Another African head wrap. A uh, tunic. You know, tunic, daishiki, and tunic, is, and it just uh, daishiki are like the same thing. You know, it's been worn for a while. Oops, handsome lady. Okay, and this is something you see, and, and this might be coincidence, but you see it frequently. You see hairstyles that are shaped like uh, ancient Egyptian um, crowns, like that. That's, you know, and this is just hairstyles. That's another one that's similar. That's another one. You know, there's 
that's just a doll that was found in ancient Egypt. Uh, there we go. Hairstyles in. Hairstyles. Yeah. Uh, and you see the flower, the feathers there. I think these are uh, Kushites, possibly. Then uh, you got the pleated beard. This guy's from the Mangbidu tribe. They have pleated beards. As you can see, ancient Egyptian pleated beards. They also do head binding. And they also like have sculptures of their head binding. And then you see circumcision, nudity, big in Africa. Africa is circumcised up the yang, and they're nude, nude all the time. And, you know, it's pretty consistent. Then you have hieroglyphic writing. I think this is the Vi script. Actually, that might be alphabetical. That's a Dogen script. That's hieroglyphic. Uh, I think that might be in Sabidi script. Dogen again, that's, that's the Gez script. I recognize that. That's in Sabidi script again. That's what's on the girl's face. And that's one of the reasons why we got to study West Africa because you got a whole bunch of, of glyphs. And these, these glyphs actually made it to America. Um, I was listening to somebody from the Amin Ra squad talk about how you see the, the, these glyphs on African burials in the U.S., like this culture, the Shanti Akan, that that was brought to America. Like Africans came literate enough to to convey these messages and put them on their in, in their graves. You see, these are neck rings. You see it in old Benin statues. You see it in Asia. I think it's just one group in Asia and, and one group in Africa that really rocks them like that. So then you have the Benin statue. So really, one ancient group that doesn't do it anymore, two groups that do it now. Uh, scarification, this is an article on scarification that was found on mummies. They use this picture. I think this picture might not be accurate. Uh, I think they just might have threw it in there to make it look good. But the other diagram is, is more of a below, if you go back, is that's more along along the line of what they were seeing on the mummies because the mummies weren't carved up they, they didn't have that much scarification uh they you know it was simpler stuff like this i think this is a woman or or dude <laughs> very feminine torso um so you have scarification here you have a uh egyptian harp and this is a main b2 again they also have circumcision you know, then you have the banjo that was played in ancient Egypt, an African word. Another thing that was brought to America from West Africa. Uh, then you have, oh, I forgot what these, these, um, these, they're called. They're like ceremony, ceremonial people. And I've seen them do have two roles in ceremonies. One, they're, they're like demons. And the other one, they're, they're more of the good guys. I don't know. It's been compared to the Jed man. Notice how they're both were holding fly whisks. Fly whisks are frequent. Then you have uh, circumcision. Like I said, that's prominent. And it's the same type of ritual circumcision that occurs as a coming of age event. It's not, you know, when you're a kid. Like, Wicked, one of the things I don't like about Wikipedia, and I, haven't, I should change, is... Because Herodotus said this too, like Herodotus was clear where circumcision came from, that it came from Ethiopia, and that's back when they defined Ethiopia as the middle of Africa. That was before modern Ethiopia. Ethiopia was the mid chunk of Africa. So there you go. And then here's another point I like to make is when it comes to uh, female circumcision, it existed in ancient Egypt. Okay, a lot of you know Strabo. It mentioned it. It's been found in mummies. Right here, it talks about Egyptian mummies from 200 BC. Here's another example that, you know, kind of two best figures right there. And there's the fly whisk again with the staff representing chief, elder, and you can see linguistic correspondences with that. And there's one that I did where just going through looking at the word serpent, how it shows up, and just languages that you can look up on Google Translate. In Yoka, in Yoka, 
And then that was my estimate for Kemet, because I'm trying to find out what might be a better way to pronounce NM.